Before we begin, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the passing of James Jim Ward, who worked at TSR for 20 years and contributed to Deities and Demigods, Greyhawk, and designed Gamma World, the first post-apocalyptic TTRPG. Respect must be paid. Our thoughts and prayers go out to Jim's family and friends at this difficult time. He will be missed. Last week, Wizards of the Coast put out a consumer survey, and Mike Shea, aka Sly Flourish, the Lazy Dungeon Master, and Bob World Builder answered it. And I thought it would be fun to do the same. So I followed Bob's link to the official Wizards of the Coast survey and found it had been uh, disabled. It's finished. Probably because they didn't like the answers. Fortunately, Bob put up his own poll, and I've included a link to it in the doobly-doo below, and I will share with you my answers, and they just might surprise you, today on Dungeon Craft. Deathbringer here. Subscribe to the channel and sign up for the Deathbringer RPG newsletter at the link below. This video is brought to you by Tomb of Guys and Gax from Gooey Cube, an adventure homage and campaign setting honoring Gary Gygax, brought to you by Luke Gygax, and publisher Alphineus Goo. And this Kickstarter is in its last few days, so you want to act now so you don't miss out. The tomb is a brutal, grim, dark dungeon crawl in the classic old school style. And the campaign setting, completely unique, featuring a number of old school luminaries as NPCs that you can encounter and interact with. The ghost of Garold Geisengax, Luke Geisengax and his family, Peter Atkinson, Mike Carr, Larry Elmore, Ed Greenwood, Errol Otis, plus me, Dan the Didactic. And we also contributed writing to this project. And if you've never seen him, Gooey Cube products are first rate. Here's a copy of their last box set. The Darkest Dream. These books are spiral bound so they lay flat on your table, slick pages, and first rate art made by humans. Pledge early and you get a ton of extra stuff. Link below. All right, here we go. Special thanks again to Bob World Builder for putting up the poll, and I think it's going to be open for a few days, so you can participate too. So the first question is, how do you feel about Dungeons & Dragons? I hate this game. I don't like this game. I'm neutral on this game. I like this game. I love this game. All right, well, so the first question is, what game do we mean? Wizards probably means their version of Dungeons & Dragons, which is not the one they're celebrating that's 50 years old. Gary Gygax's version of Dungeons & Dragons is very different from 5e. Nevertheless, I actually like them both. Dungeons & Dragons changed my entire life, so I at the very least like the game. Even if we're just talking about 5th edition, I know a lot of people think I don't like it. Even my friends say, oh, he hates 5th edition. That's not true. I actually enjoy 5th edition. I think it's one of the best written versions of the game, and this is what I like about it. I like the D20 scale, using the D20 for everything, and I like the modularity of it. I like that you could take parts out of it, mix and match. You don't have to play with multi-classes or feats if you don't want to. The only quibbles I really have with the mechanics of the game is I think the death saves are a little too soft, and I don't like all the add-ons. I don't like the sidekicks and these the strange species like the turtle people and the rabbit people. To me, Dungeons & Dragons at its core is about exploring dungeons. It's a, it's a hostile environment. There's also scaling problems where the characters have too many hit points and players can look for loopholes where they can do an 18,000 points of damage if they use the right spell combinations, and there are videos about how you could do that. It's definitely rules, not rulings. We cross that border somewhere in the third edition, and I prefer the rulings, not rules, that I grew up with the D&D Basic Edition, and I actually prefer the Basic Maldve Edition even to the classic Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, the first edition. My own homebrew version of D&D, Deathbringer, is actually a combination of 5e and the Maldve Basic Edition. I also think D&D is not so much a game as a language that has a lot of different dialects. I think Pathfinder is a dialect, Shadow Dark is a dialect, Index Card RPG, and Old School Essentials, and Basic Fantasy, they're all dialects of D&D. To me, if I look at a character sheet and I see Strength, Intelligence, Wisdom, Dexterity, Hit Points, Armor Class, I'm looking at Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah, like Dungeon Crawl Classics use some slightly different dice, and Pathfinder has a different action economy and different fates, but you're still rolling a 20-sided die and you're trying to roll high, so I can navigate any of those games. Question 2. 
When was the last time you recommended D&D to someone else? Well, if you're talking about 5th edition, I recommended the basic set just last year. I thought it was a very well-written set, and I particularly complimented the rules, which are crystal clear. And I always recommend the D&D Essential set. Wizards of the Coast own data shows most campaigns don't last over 7th level. I always say to new people, just buy the Essential set. It'll take you to 7th level. It's got all the core classes and species. For the casual player, the Essential set is more than enough, and I think it's excellent. But if you're talking about D&D variants, like Index Card RPG, Old School Essentials, or Shadow Dark, I recommend them all the time. I think they are cleaner more compact, much faster moving games. So in terms of the D&D variants, I recommend them all, including my own game, Deathbringer, all the time. Three, do you think D&D is becoming less popular, becoming more popular, or staying the same? Well, if you read Wizards of the Coast last quarterly earnings report, which I did not do an episode on because it was kind of like more of the same, uh, you'll see that D&D has actually stalled somewhat. The sales of recent books are trending downward. The game is moving up in popularity just slightly, and this might have to do with anticipation of the new edition, whatever the reason, D&D has definitely stalled in terms of sales. However, it's definitely not shrinking. Four, how do you feel about the current direction of the D&D game? I am slightly negative. I think D&D works best when it's not a superhero game. I like the idea of danger. I like the feeling my character can die. There's also a shift, and this has been going on through several editions of D&D, where it's moving away from being a game master-centric game to being more of a player-centric game, giving the players all these options and combinations and powers, and that definitely sells books, which is why the game is so popular. But it's also, in my opinion, one of the reasons many of these campaigns don't get past 7th level. Because the more powers and spells the players have, the more challenging it is for the game master to run. And you get in arguments over rules, and that leads to game master fatigue and burnout. And if you've never seen Dungeon Craft before, this is definitely a very pro-GM channel. Five, how do you feel about Wizards of the Coast. This is gonna surprise a lot of people because I've been accused in the comments of only covering negative stuff about Wizards of the Coast and always crapping on them. I think I'm critical of some of the things they do, like sending private detectives to harass YouTubers who have less than 10,000 subscribers. I don't like the idea of them firing people right before Christmas, but I'm actually neutral on this company. It's a giant corporation. It's part of Hasbro and giant corporations are going to do what they're going to do. In my analysis of the company stock, I'm just analyzing boneheaded decisions they've been making. And that has been borne out in the share prices in their last few quarterly earnings reports. I mean, they're not good. But Wizards of the Coast as a company is definitely the best run section of Hasbro. It's the most profitable. When was the last time you recommended Wizards of the Coast products to someone else? Again, about a year ago with the basic set. I prefer variants of D&D like Shadow Dark, like D&D Hardcore Mode that make the game a little darker and more dungeon crawly. But if someone asks me, hey, I'm looking to buy Dungeons & Dragons for my kid they've never played before again, I always recommend the Essential set. Devin, do you think Wizards of the Coast is becoming less popular, more popular, or staying the same? I think the fact is Wizards of the Coast is getting more popular. Magic is just killing it. Magic Arena is a cash cow, and Magic players, like D&D players, often love to complain, but the game is getting more popular. It's expanding all the time, and it's got the revenue coming in to back it up. As the talking head saying, facts all come with points of view. Facts don't do what you want them to. And the fact is, Wizards of the Coast products are more popular than ever. Eight, how do you feel about the current direction of Wizards of the Coast? Well, I'm not a fan of laying off people at Christmas time. I'm not a fan of cutting back your book staff. I like physical books. And the thing about this new edition is 
I don't think anybody's really calling for one. I'm not really sure there's a grassroots movement for a new edition of D&D. It kind of feels like a 50th anniversary cash grab. On the other hand, that's kind of what companies do. I know Chris Cox recently made comments about looking into AI and maybe it can run Dungeons and Dragons games and some people are upset, but it's like, yeah, it doesn't surprise me. He wants to squeeze every dollar out of the game he can. So I am neutral. It's like, yeah, mega corporations doing what mega corporations do. And how often do you watch or read content about RPG news or current events? Man, it's like from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed. I live RPG stuff. But what do you think? You can take Bob's survey at the link below. And if you enjoy my content, consider becoming a Dungeon Craft patron. Links to that below as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. May all your rolls be 20s.